Disney finally understood how to make a Predator movie when they made Prey. The feral Predator received an array of new weapons and upgrades, breathing fresh life into their formidable arsenal. Keeping this in mind, we thought it would be nice to release the ultimate list of Predator weapons that have appeared in movies. While evolution is inevitable, certain elements remain steadfast, for it simply wouldn't be Predator without them. And that extends to the wide variety of traditional-looking, uber-powerful, and technologically advanced weapons that the Predators use. So, without further ado, let's get into our scout ships and hunt these 31 weapons down. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Number 1. Wrist Blades Wrist blades, also known as gauntlet knives, are one of the most commonly found weapons used by the master hunters, and one can say they are synonymous with the predators. These blades are characterized by their retractable and serrated edges measuring between 6 and 18 inches in length and 2 to 8 inches in width. Attached to a gauntlet worn on the wrist, the blades extend over the back of the Predator's hand, which makes the weapon pretty handy. While most Predators opt for a single gauntlet filled with parallel blades, there have been several variations in style. Furthermore, wrist blades hold great significance within Yaucha culture, particularly in terms of honor. The Brawlers, in particular, exclusively arm themselves with wrist blades. While wrist blades boast formidable advantages, they are not without their limitations. Longer blades may remain uncovered by a predator's cloak, and even when cloaked they may become visible if stained with copious amounts of blood or gore. Additionally, not all wrist blades are immune to the corrosive effects of xenomorph blood, leading to potential melting during combat with these formidable creatures. This issue primarily affects young blood predators. Further testament to their significance, wrist blades have proven to possess non-combat applications. During encounters in ancient Yaocha ruins on BG-386, the predator named Dark used his wrist blades to unlock specific door mechanisms. Number 2. Shurikens Shurikens, much like the Smart Disc, operate on similar principles and can be seen as an alternative design of the same weapon within the Predator arsenal. In fact, Paul W.S. Anderson, who directed Alien vs. Predator, felt that the Smart Discs looked more like a frisbee than a weapon and wanted to do something different in his movie. These throwing weapons possess built-in tracking and flight correction capabilities, enabling them to pursue and engage targets with precision. Interestingly, the Shuriken can track multiple targets simultaneously and return to the user, which does sound like a boomerang. However, due to its increased weight and bulk compared to the Smart Disc, the Shuriken occasionally encounters difficulties in returning to its point of origin, often getting stuck in solid surfaces instead. In Alien vs. Predator Requiem, it effortlessly sliced through a xenomorph, maintaining its momentum to lift and impale a human target onto a wall several feet above the ground. When not in use, the shuriken's six blades conveniently fold into the hub. Worthy to carry the mark. Number 3. The Combi Stick now, the combi stick is a special weapon in Yaucha culture, as it is given to a predator once they have completed their training. Over time, Yaucha warriors adorn their combi sticks with skulls and totems from their various hunts, turning the staff into a valued but grotesque possession. You know, rich with the memories of the people and creatures they've hunted down and killed. The combi stick offers a multitude of advantages in combat. Known for its exceptional speed, balance, and strength, it provides Yaucha warriors with a versatile and potent weapon in hand-to-hand -hand combat, surpassing the capabilities of, say, wrist blades. Additionally, the combo stick demonstrates impressive defensive capabilities, capable of parrying and deflecting attacks from claws, teeth, bullets, and blades with relative ease. Its lightweight and well-balanced design makes it suitable for throwing with great force and accuracy over considerable distances, and the Yaucha can rest assured that the pointy tips will puncture the target with ease. The Spear Masters specialize in the use of the combo stick, dedicating themselves to mastering it. And the Spear Masters are ranked second only to the Elders, and that's saying something. Number 4. Smart Disk Equipped with advanced computer-controlled gyros, the Smart Disk is like a teenager's smartphone. It's indispensable. 
just that the smart discs don't actually damage the predators. These gyros ensure that the disc returns to its wielder after being thrown and grant the weapon a remarkable level of auto guidance, enabling it to adjust its course mid-air and track a moving target if necessary. The technology responsible for maintaining the disc's altitude during these maneuvers is, of course, a mystery. By utilizing the body heat signature of targets, smart discs are capable of automatic tracking, although some variants can also be manually directed using the targeting laser integrated into the Predator's bio-helmet. This cool piece of weaponry possesses the ability to track multiple targets with a single throw, much like the shurikens. The razor edges of the smart disc effortlessly slice through most substances. Witnesses have observed a smart disc seamlessly cutting through numerous cattle carcasses and swiftly dispatching a man without the slightest deviation or reduction in speed. In the event that the disc becomes embedded in a solid object, it can be retrieved by the predator with a simple press of a button on his wrist gauntlet, which is like the most useful device ever, but we'll get to that in a second. Of course, there are yauchas called Disc Masters who possess a remarkable degree of control over the smart disc. These skilled warriors can redirect the disc using their minds alone, although mastering such an ability requires years of honing their skills. It is also possible to upgrade smart discs with a nano-vibronic edge, a high-speed molecular chainsaw encircling the disc, which grants it the ability to effortlessly penetrate even hardened composite armors. Then there's the haywire mode, which turns the smart disc into a frenzied ripping machine that massacres the internal structure of the target. Number 5. Plasma Caster The Plasma Caster, known by various names such as Plasma Cannon, Laser Cannon, or Shoulder Cannon, is the best weapon for long-range attacks. It shoots armor-penetrating plasma bolts that can only be described as plasma shrapnel, inflicting severe wounds that can be fatal, at least for a human. It's usually shoulder-mounted, and because of its arm, it can discharge multiple plasma bolts over a short span of time, much like an automatic gun. Furthermore, the power of each burst can be manually adjusted. Well, not manually, but you get the gist, right? These can range from a minor bolt suitable for individual prey to a blast so potent that it can breach the hulls of interstellar vessels. Typically, the energy bolts emanate a pale blue hue, although variations in yellow and gold have been seen. As far as the targeting is concerned, the system is integrated into the Predator's bio-helmet, enabling the weapon to synchronize with the hunter's head movement. A notable feature is the triangular formation of the three-pointed targeting laser sight, which increases accuracy while symbolizing Yaucha unity and teamwork. In cases of tracking failure, certain models can be modified and wielded as handheld plasma pistols. Furthermore, plasma casters exhibit a degree of targeting memory, allowing them to track and engage targets even when the predator turns away, although this ability might be limited to stationary targets. Number 6. Self-Destruct Device in dire situations where imminent doom looms, the Yaucha use their ultimate offensive weapon, the self-destruct device concealed within their wrist gauntlet. Once activated, the device undergoes a charging phase. A countdown promptly appears on the digitized display, serving as a reminder that doom is imminent. While not nuclear in nature, the explosion emits radiation capable of inflicting severe sickness, as we see in the case of Dutch portrayed by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the original Predator film. Fascinatingly, this self-destruct device grants the Yaucha the ability to determine the level of devastation they unleash upon their surroundings. They possess the option to level vast expanses of rainforest, encompassing city blocks beyond counting, or adopt a minimalist approach and simply vaporize themselves with minimal collateral damage. This design feature aligns with the Yaucha Code of Honor, which forbids the elimination of prey that is unarmed, weak, elderly, or pregnant, essentially deeming them unworthy. Consequently, if the explosion risks harming undeserving creatures, the Yaucha opts to mitigate the destruction. However, self-vaporization remains an indispensable outcome. Refraining from self-destruction would risk exposing their presence to the public, or worse yet, allowing their advanced technology to fall into the wrong hands. Any hands that don't belong to the Yaucha, that is. Moreover, it is possible to remove the self-destruct component from the gauntlet, albeit rarely done. This extreme measure is reserved for situations where causing large-scale havoc supersedes the avoidance of capture, or when a Yaucha seeks to feign their demise before transitioning into a bad blood predator, a faction that disregards the Code of Honor and hunts for sheer amusement, 
even targeting unworthy prey. Additionally, Yaucha starships possess their own self-destruct devices, amplified to an unprecedented level. Turn back! It's a trap! It's a trap! Number 7. Whip. The Whip, also referred to as the Razor Whip, is a highly agile and flexible weapon. But then, it's a whip, so it's supposed to do that, I guess? Consisting of a segmented handheld bullwhip, it constricts its intended target in an unbeatable grip. Once pulled taut, the whip can cut and is capable of cleaving adversaries in half with ease. Notably, the whip is resistant to the corrosive effects of a xenomorph's acidic blood, so it is possible that whips are made out of a xenomorph's tail, or at least coated with their biomechanical hide. During Wolf's mission to eradicate the xenomorph infestation in Gunnison, he wielded the whip and was exceptional with it. Furthermore, it comes in three varieties. Shivcutter is the most basic iteration of the whip and is probably crafted from a drone, which is hinted at by the small barb tip. The Life Scythe Razor Whip represents a more robust variant of the weapon. It displays noticeable differences in size and coloration compared to the Shiv Cutter, suggesting it may be fashioned from a different Xenomorph cast. Lastly, there's the Praetorian's Tip Razor Whip, which stands as the most superior and formidable variant, likely constructed from the tail of a Praetorian Xenomorph. These whips are larger, tougher, and more lethal than the other two variations. Number 8. Net Gun The net gun is a compact handheld device that propels a bundled net that expands rapidly as it exits the barrel. Once captured, the prey becomes vulnerable and easily targeted by the predator, which is of course a clear strategic advantage. It's not uncommon for juvenile predators to immobilize their prey using the net gun before delivering the final blow with their spear gun. The metallic net itself serves as both a restraining tool and a weapon. Upon attachment to a surface or wrapping around a target, it automatically tightens, cutting into the flesh of anything caught within its grasp, inflicting severe and potentially fatal wounds. Ordinary tools prove ineffective in cutting through the net, although the Yaucha Smart Disk slices it open with ease. The net is not impervious to Xenomorph blood, unlike many other Yaucha weapons, so it's practically useless against the slimy minions of Hell. The reloading mechanism of the net gun is rather unknown, but it is likely to make use of some form of cartridge system, which means that the reload would offer a fresh net. Additionally, a variant of the net gun known as the net ball was seen in the movie Prey. Once thrown, it expands into a functional net mid-air. Although it is unclear if the tightening system of the net ball can be adjusted, its strength is evident, capable of capturing adult men. Number 9. Spear Gun The spear gun is another projectile weapon but this one propels metal spears towards its intended targets. The mechanism is interesting as it generates no visible muzzle flash and emits minimal noise, and yet delivers spears with a high velocity and extreme precision. It is capable of impaling victims onto solid surfaces, much like a nail gun. Contrary to its name, the projectiles fired by the spear gun typically deviate from the traditional spear shape. The most prevalent design features a U-shaped projectile with a weighted tail and two serrated prongs pointing forward. Some variants even equip the projectiles with their very own cloaking system. One of the many versions of the spear gun is the Bleeder spear gun, used by the Stalker in Aliens vs Predator Extinction. These projectiles incorporate a blood groove along the center, strategically designed to cause significant bleeding if lodged within the victim's flesh. In Aliens vs Predator and Aliens vs Predator 2, a rifle variant of the spear gun was seen and was aptly named the Spear Gun Rifle. Equipped with a telescopic scope for more precision, the spear gun rifle serves as the Yaucha version of a sniper rifle. Another variant, the bolt gun, was wielded by the feral predator. The bolt gun utilizes the biomask's targeting laser system, much like the plasma casters. Number 10. Cut Clamp The cut clamp serves as a cutting tool as well as a throwing weapon. It looks like a segmented blade with a claw-like hook at one end and a mechanism for activation at the other. In its dormant state, the cut clamp assumes a disc-like shape, ready for deployment. When thrown, it operates similarly to bolas, but instead of restraining its target, it tears through objects. Despite its intended cutting function, there is possibility of the device becoming lodged in the target, 
which should be considered a design flaw. During the hunt in the Great Plains, the feral predator carried the cut clamps, utilizing them as a means of escape from a bear trap set by the French. Later, when the injured French fur trapper encountered Naru, she appropriated the cut clamp while tending to his amputated leg. She made use of the Yaucha technology to incapacitate the leader of the French and use him as bait to attract the feral predator. Number 11. Laser Guided Arrow in Prey, the feral predator introduces a unique variation of its traditional weaponry, distinct from the shoulder cannon seen in previous franchise installments. Instead of the familiar blue plasma blasts, the feral predator in Prey uses the laser-guided arrows. These arrows are launched from a specialized firearm and are guided by a laser targeting system embedded in the predator's mask. This weapon ensures unparalleled accuracy, as the arrows possess the ability to maneuver around obstacles and maintain their trajectory until they reach their intended target. This deviation in weaponry marks a welcome departure from the conventional arsenal seen in previous Predator films. Number 12. Biomask. The Biomask, also referred to as a biohelmet, is not just a mask, but more like a jack-of-all-trades. Beyond its primary purpose of safeguarding the Predator's head, this advanced helmet provides a multitude of functions. It allows the Yaucha to zoom in on targets, which of course helps them in firing their plasma casters and arrows more precisely. The mask also incorporates a range of features such as vocal mimicry, breathing apparatus, diagnostics, and visual and audio recording systems. The biohelmet establishes a direct connection with the Predator's wrist gauntlet, which serves as the control center for many of the helmet's functions. You could say that the wrist gauntlet is more like the motherboard of a Predator's weaponry. This symbiotic relationship between the two devices yields some unparalleled utility for the Predators. Additionally, the biohelmet's distinctive design contributes significantly to the unique and intimidating appearance of these great hunters. In certain Predator clans, an ancient holds a position of utmost wisdom and age. This venerable member possesses a highly revered mask called the Mask of the Ancients. Passed down through generations, this mask undergoes modifications and enhancement over time, resulting in a version that's distinct from the rest. Number 13. Cloak. The cloak, as the name suggests, is the sci-fi version of Harry Potter's invisibility cloak and is an extremely essential tool that grants the Yauchas the ability to become virtually invisible to both the naked eye and various electronic scanning methods. Referred to by alternative names such as the invisibility system, chameleon field, or shift suit, the cloak operates by manipulating the light around the Yaucha's body, which is similar to what the invisible woman from the Fantastic Four does. It creates the illusion that the surfaces behind the predator are visible. Although not flawless, the cloak can effectively conceal a predator, especially in specific environments and especially when the predator remains motionless. While the cloak proves highly effective against prey that relies primarily on vision, it holds little utility during xenomorph hunts, as the xenomorphs possess the ability to sense the presence of a yaucha even when the cloak is engaged. It's like turning off the lights to hide from a blind killer. Interestingly, much like the self-destruct component, the Yaucha starships also use a similar cloaking system, enabling the entire vessel to attain the perfect camouflage. Despite its advantages, the cloak does have limitations. When in motion, a discernible humanoid bubble or distortion can be observed in the air surrounding the Yaucha. The visibility of this distortion varies depending on the background conditions. This may explain why the Yaucha species often favors jungle hunting grounds, as the dense and non-uniform foliage in such environments aids in masking the distortion more effectively. Number 14. Falcon the Falcon was a remote-controlled drone developed by the Super Predator clan, and it served as a valuable tool for recon and intelligence gathering. Designed with the primary purpose of providing real-time assessment of the surrounding area, this device offers the Predators extensive information on the movements and positions of potential prey. Similar to a Yaucha biohelmet, the Falcon is equipped with various vision modes, enhancing its use and efficacy. There are two known variants of the Falcon. One variant closely resembles a terrestrial bird and was used to spy on Drake and Ronald Noland on the Game Preserve planet in the 2010 movie Predators. The second variant takes on a more mechanical appearance and was utilized by Falconer to track Royce and his group. Number 15. Wrist Cannon 
The wrist cannon is pretty much integrated into the Yaucha's wrist gauntlet, and it offers enhanced capabilities compared to its counterparts, like the energy flechette. This optimized weapon is designed to unleash powerful bolts with significant firepower, albeit in the form of energy bolts, but it rivals the plasma caster in terms of destructive potential. It shares the range of the plasma caster, but is easier to use. However, the wrist cannon does possess certain limitations, similar to the energy flechette. It lacks tracking features, requiring the Yaucha to physically aim by pointing their arm directly at the target. This makes it challenging to engage small or swiftly moving targets effectively. Nonetheless, skilled and experienced users such as the Upgrade Predator can overcome this issue. Number 16, Predator Mines. Predator Mines, also known as Proximity Mines or Throwing Mines, are diverse mine-based weapons, and these are pretty much similar to human mines which remain stationary devices until they are triggered by an external stimulus in close proximity, either through automatic detection or remote activation. One variant of these mines is the Laser Mine, deployed by Wolf during his mission in Gunnison, Colorado. Emitting laser beams of immense cutting power, they swiftly dismember xenomorphs, effectively neutralizing them. Wolf strategically used these mines to both trap the xenomorphs and dispose of them. Another type is the Remote Mines, used by Dark on BG-386 during his mission to recover the Youngblood pack. These mines could be remotely detonated using Dark's wrist gauntlet. Scarface used throwing mines in Neonopolis in 2030. These unique mines could be deployed as proximity traps in the environment or thrown directly at enemies detonating upon contact. There are specialized variants such as fire throwing mines, which use incendiary explosives causing victims to catch fire, and EMP throwing mines, harmless to humans but capable of temporarily disabling mechanical systems and disrupting visual camouflage systems like a predator's cloak. They can also hurt creatures who have advanced hearing. Imagine blowing one of these bad boys around Daredevil. The feral predator used distinctive proximity mines during his hunt in the Great Plains. Resembling disc-like tools with red neon lines and retractable spikes, these mines were stored within the wrist gauntlet. Activation involved inserting a specific code similar to a self-destruct device. Once armed, the mines would automatically deploy and seek out nearby living beings before detonating and obliterating them. Number 17, Feral Predator's Wrist Shield. The Wrist Shield, also known as The Shield, was a compact, deployable device used by the Feral Predator in Prey. Despite its small size, this Yaucha tool exhibits exceptional durability and easy retraction when not in use. Its sturdy construction enables it to withstand various forms of attack, including blunt force, bladed weapons, and even bullets fired from flintlock firearms such as muskets and pistols. In addition to its defensive capabilities, the wrist shield can also be used offensively. When activated at close range, it enables the Feral Predator to swiftly slice through victims. During his hunt in the Great Plains, the Feral Predator effectively used the wrist shield against a group of French voyagers who ambushed him. It's almost strange that predators back in the day had much more advanced weaponry than the ones who came later, at least during the original movie. However, one can give it rationale by saying that each predator personalizes and enhances their own weapons. Number 18, Disintegrator Gas. The disintegrator gas served the purpose of decomposing organic matter, specifically the remains of victims' heads, while leaving their skulls intact. In the year 1719, the feral predator used the disintegrator gas, and it finally revealed how exactly the predators make their trophies. After successfully eliminating a wolf, the predator retreated to a secluded cave, carrying the decapitated head of the animal. Using the gas, which resembled a dissolving liquid, the predator sprayed the severed head, causing the fur, flesh, and muscle muscles surrounding the skull to disintegrate entirely. This Yaucha technology shows how exactly the predators have been swiftly disposing of organic remnants while preserving the skulls as trophies. The disintegrator gas served as a powerful tool in the predator's arsenal, allowing for the efficient eradication of unwanted organic matter and ensuring the focus remained on the coveted skulls of the defeated prey. Number 19 Laser Discs The Feral Predator and Prey also has these awesome deployable laser discs. During one of the scenes, the Predator removes his gauntlet, activating three discs that emerge from the device. These discs swiftly engage in a mesmerizing display of spinning and hovering, ultimately unleashing powerful lasers capable of slicing through virtually any obstacle in their trajectory. The laser discs effortlessly massacre the last remaining French trappers, leaving no room for escape. Notably, the intensity of the lasers is such that even trees succumb to their force. 
case, it is plausible to interpret these laser discs as an early manifestation of the self-destruct component found in future iterations of the Predator gauntlet. Having said that, the Predator species is thousands of years old, and it would be unlikely that they developed their tech between the 18th and the 20th centuries, which is when Prey and Predator are respectively set. However, while the primary purpose of the discs is to eliminate adversaries, their ability to unleash an overwhelming destructive power suggests a parallel with the self-destruct mechanism employed by subsequent Predators. Number 20. Predator Harpoon in The Predator, the arrival of the upgrade Predator on Earth reveals a distinct departure in terms of equipment and armor compared to its predecessors. Stripped down to a minimalistic configuration, the upgrade Predator relied on its wrist gauntlet, which integrated all of its weaponry. A new addition to the weapons was the Harpoon, which resembled Wolf's Whip from Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Quite obviously, the weapon takes the form of a harpoon when fired from the gauntlet. As it is launched, it swiftly traverses its intended path, piercing through anything that happens to be in the way. During the battle outside the crashed Predator ship, the upgrade Predator uses it against several unfortunate soldiers who are dispatched pretty quickly. Number 21. Scimitar Blades The scimitar on the arm blade of the Yaucha Hunters is a metallic bladed weapon that shares similarities with the wrist blades, at least as far as the function and use are concerned. However, the scimitar offers distinct advantages in terms of range due to its larger size. But this advantage comes at the cost of increased bulk and reduced maneuverability, impacting the predator's mobility even during non-combat situations. When fully extended, the scimitar blades can reach lengths comparable to a predator's leg, granting the hunter a significant reach advantage in close quarters combat. Notably, these extended blades remain concealed by the cloak, even when fully deployed, unlike the standard wrist blades, which is a great tactical advantage. Chopper, the young blood predator, wielded scimitar blades during his hunt in the pyramid room. He wanted to kill Lex Woods, but his assault was interrupted by the xenomorph known as Grid. In a swift and deadly exchange, Grid impaled Chopper through the chest, sealing his fate with a final, fatal headbite. Number 22. Noose. The noose, seen in Alien vs. Predator in 2004, can be considered a distinct tool used by Scar. Although not traditionally categorized as a weapon, its operation is fairly lethal and one cannot escape it. During the scene where the team of mercenaries travels through a corridor, Scar uses a form of wire to capture one of the unsuspecting soldiers. With calculated precision, the Predator suspends the wire from above, capturing the mercenary's head within and swiftly hoisting him upwards. Notably, the wire exhibits an intriguing ability to blend into its surroundings, appearing cloaked like the Predator itself. Number 23. Ceremonial Dagger As the name suggests, the ceremonial dagger holds significant cultural and practical significance within Predator society and their arsenal. Primarily utilized as a last resort implement or for extracting trophies from fallen adversaries, this blade plays a crucial role in the blooding rite of young bloods. While its primary function lies in removing the carapace of a xenomorph, it also serves as a close contact weapon when necessary. The blade itself is expertly crafted from the bones of a xenomorph, granting it resistance against the corrosive nature of their blood. The ceremonial dagger made its first major appearance in Alien vs. Predator, where Celtic sought to kill Grid. However, Grid managed to break free and swiftly retaliated, ultimately headbiting Celtic. Later on, Scar used the dagger to dismember a xenomorph to make weapons for his newfound friend, Lex. Number 24. Predator Killer Initially stolen by the fugitive predator, it was brought to Earth and pursued by the upgrade predator who aimed to eliminate it to prevent humans from getting their hands on it. This full body armor suit is specifically tailored for humans and faithfully replicates the physical appearance of the Yaucha, complete with its distinctive dreadlocks and everything. Positioned on each shoulder are three plasma casters, each equipped with independent targeting lasers along with a giant cannon. Additionally, the suit incorporates elongated wrist blades that surpass the standard length. While the precise extent of its capabilities is not demonstrated, it is reasonable to assume that the Predator Killer possesses similar functionalities to standard Yaucha body armor, such as the ability to utilize cloaking technology and thermal vision through the integrated biohelmet. The entire Predator Killer ensemble is stored within a specialized wrist gauntlet, and has retractable bolts on each side that extend when the armor is not in use. Upon activation, the bolts retract, firmly securing the gauntlet onto the wearer's hand. 
It is then that they materialize the remaining components of the armor, including its built-in weaponry, and all of this happens in a matter of seconds. However, according to audio logs produced by Sean Keyes, the armor appears to be an early prototype, as it exhibited several notable flaws despite its advanced hardware. Tests conducted on the armor revealed its brittleness and susceptibility to small arms fire. The power source used in the suit was only capable of sustaining its functionality for a mere 24 seconds before shutting down, and attempts to utilize the plasma casters resulted in overwhelming the suit's systems. But then, the poor fellow went through hell to get us the Predator Killer, right? I guess we should honor the fugitive and ignore the movie he appeared in. Number 25. Predator Armor Predator armor varies in design across different films, but it consistently provides protection while allowing for agility and stealth. But again, that's because armors can be specific to different predators. I mean, they're not uniforms, right? Typically, the armor includes a partial or full breastplate, pauldrons, wrist gauntlets housing the self-destruct device, neck armor, and a helmet. Netting is often present on the upper torso and legs. In the original Predator movie, the Jungle Hunter sets the standard with tribal and Asian influences. The armor included chest armor, pauldrons, forearm gauntlets, a string belt adorned with hunted creature bones, protective groin and thigh armor, and leg armor. Predator 2 features the City Hunter, who possesses similar armor pieces with a distinct bronze coloration. In Aliens vs. Predator, the Predators wear bulkier armor and, of course, some of their weapons were not resistant to the corrosive acid of Xenomorphs. Alien vs. Predator Requiem's Wolf wears armor that consists of a smaller chest piece, left shoulder pauldron, forearm gauntlets, lower body armor, and thigh pieces. Furthermore, it was resistant to the acidic xenomorph blood. Predators introduced various Predator armors. The Falconer and Berserker share similar styles, while Tracker's armor differs, emitting chest armor and featuring neck armor. In The Predator from 2018, the Fugitive Predator possesses unique armor, but the Upgrade Predator's evolved skin acts as a protective shell, rendering the need for extensive armor unnecessary. However, we should note that he still wears a groin armor, so that says a little something about him. Number 26, Plasma Pistol. The Plasma Pistol, also referred to as the Plasma Handgun, is a compact adaptation of the Plasma Caster. It can be either purpose-built or crafted on the spot using salvaged components from a damaged Plasma Caster. As one would expect, purpose-built models tend to be more potent and versatile than their makeshift counterparts. When it comes to firepower, the Plasma Pistol packs a wallop, firing bolts of plasma akin to those unleashed by its larger sibling. However, being a handheld weapon, it lacks the luxury of automated target tracking, necessitating manual aim by its wielder. Regrettably, this means it is best suited for short-range engagements, as its effectiveness diminishes with distance. In some instances, the plasma pistol exhibits an intriguing arc-like trajectory, further constraining its range. Wolf's plasma pistol in Gunnison, Colorado necessitated a brief recharge time after each shot, rendering it less suitable for frenetic close-quarters combat. Number 27, Flaying Tool. The Flaying Tool, with its distinctive Y shape and slightly spaced prongs, serves a macabre yet practical purpose in the Yaucha arsenal. Grasped firmly at the bottom, this instrument emits a searing laser from the gap between its prongs. Heat energy is emitted that's capable of peeling the skin off of a freshly claimed prey. It is a tool commonly wielded by the Yaucha, serving both as a ritualistic means to flay their fallen prey, but it can also be used for other purposes. Number 28, Dissolving Liquid. This chemical is a highly potent, corrosive blue liquid that possesses the remarkable ability to dissolve organic matter with mind-blowing efficiency, reducing even the most resilient xenomorph carcasses into a mere pile of goop. It was Wolf who first used the substance in Gunnison. Concealed within small brown vials, the dissolving liquid served as his method of eradicating all evidence of the xenomorph presence. While primarily employed for its intended purpose, the dissolving liquid could be harnessed as a potent weapon. Its reaction to water is extremely volatile, much like strong acids, and even a small quantity of the solute has the power to vaporize vast amounts of water and any accompanying material. Interestingly, the liquid defied conventional logic by effortlessly dissolving xenomorphs themselves, who are resistant enough to have acidic blood in their veins, or whatever it is that they have. Number 29, Scout Ship. 
The scout ships are tethered to the motherships and serve as a sort of vanguard for them. With their three external thrusters propelling them, the scout ships are used to cover the last leg of the hunting journey. These vessels boast three external thrusters that propel them and come with a sharp blade, ready to slice through any obstacle in their path. Positioned at the front are two medium-range plasma cannons that serve a similar purpose and can destroy small heavenly objects or other threats. Interestingly, there is almost always a spacious trophy room that displays the hard-earned trophies from previous hunts. Within the tactical room, holographic devices project images of nearby planets, carefully chosen as potential hunting grounds. Additionally, they have a storage room to hold captive facehuggers that are let loose on a planet for the hunt. But at the end of the day, the scout ships aren't big on defense and have a very breachable hull. Number 30. Mothership The motherships are colossal mobile bases that serve as the base of operation for a large group or a clan of Yauchas. They harbor numerous scout ships, and the mothership itself is led by the clan leader. Motherships use advanced cloaking technology, rendering them undetectable to sensors and virtually impossible to discover. However, skilled pilots commanding other Yaucha vessels can use specialized beacons to locate these mysterious behemoths. Inside the ship itself, predators engage in battles, vying for honor and the acquisition of new weapons and devices. A noteworthy feature found aboard nearly every mothership is the captivity of a xenomorph queen. Now, while the scout ships carry facehuggers, the motherships carry a queen, who ensures a ready supply of ovomorphs and thereby facehuggers. Motherships are also armed with formidable beam weapons. Number 31. Sword. Lastly, we have a very traditional human weapon, a sword. It's possible that Yauchas came by the weapon during one of their hunts on Earth and became enticed by the things it could do. Marvelous Verdict As you can see, Predator weapons are nothing short of a force to reckon with, and I am not saying it just because it's a good phrase, I truly mean it. I mean, the things we saw in films like Prey and Predators are simply amazing. I guess it's a good thing humans have failed time and again to retrieve Yaucha technology because only God could help us if we ever succeeded. What do you think about the lethality of the Predator weapons? Let us know in the comments section down below, and if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.